now you talk of a, a tough start to the year, but trade has improved. So clearly it means the second quarter was better for you than the first quarter. And it seems that the lifeblood still is emerging markets. Well, clearly emerging markets are better than mature markets, that's clear. Um, but overall things are improving across the board, not because macro factors are better. I think the macro scene is no clearer now than it was six months ago. But at the back end of last year, we had a lot of destocking that flowed into this year. So the first quarter was difficult. Volumes were down. Prices were at their bottom. Since then, we've had volume recovery. Since February, all plants are back at full capacity and prices are increasing. So I think the second quarter is, is much e was much easier. 150 in the second, 120 million in the first. Yes. So clearly the trend is in the right direction. So average selling prices over the first half were worse than they were in the previous first half and the, and the year and year ago, but you, you, you're suggesting then that the trend is improving, capacity utilisation improving. Yeah, the supply fundamentals are also helpful. We've had a lot of capacity closure, so demand has come back, capacity has tightened up a bit, so supply demand balance is tighter and prices are on the up, which is good news. Going back to, to whether the life is, the, the <coughs> excitement, emerging markets, what's your revenue breakdown by uh, developed versus emerging market regions? We are 55 odd percent emerging markets, 45 percent mature markets in round terms and of course that number is growing every year in favour of the emerging markets. So it will move still further towards that, the Nordinia deal more or less keeps you in line with that percentage, so more corporate action than likely if you say that could change? No, I, th I think not necessarily, I mean I think the Nordinia deal is a good step for us, we need to be bed that down and you know, deliver the synergies first and get the value out before we think about doing other stuff, but generally the growth is in the, in the emerging markets, so every year we pull more and more of our revenue into the emerging markets mm -hmm. and seek to sell it there. Just the, the theme of corporate action, if, if things are so tough in the paper and packaging industry, are you seeing good potential deals being brought to you by the investment bankers? Well, certainly we're not that interested in Western assets by and large. They don't fit what we're looking for. I mean, the success of Mondi and our returns this year are probably twice the industry average in Europe. So we're getting something right here in a tough place. And the reason for that is that our low cost emerging market profile is very important. So assets that, that fit into that clearly are always of interest. Assets that are in the more mature, higher cost western regions are of lesser interest to us. So our, our priority at the moment really, as I say, is to bed down Nordinia once, once we own it later this year and deliver those synergies and get the returns up, uh, spin a bit of cash and then get the debt under control and then go from mm. there. So you talk about debt. So debt has risen, I think 1.2 billion euro. Uh, you, you seem to be comfortable with that, but we know that it's going to rise even further once uh, Nordinia is consummated. Are you confident that, there, that there's sufficient demand for your paper on global bond markets? Uh, in, terms of, in terms of raising debt, yes, absolutely. I think uh, you know, we could raise debt very effectively at the moment. Bond markets come and go, of course, in today's world. But overall, we're pretty comfortable about raising the necessary debt. We've got bank debt in place as a standby facility to, to actually pay for the acquisition on, on when we buy, pay for it, buy it as it were. So in terms of the financing part of the balance sheet, we're in good shape. The balance sheet is strong um, and the ability to raise capital is clearly there for us. The issue is remaining with a conservative balance sheet, which in our view is appropriate. Uh, you know, we are in a commodity industry ultimately, the world is a highly volatile place at the moment, so we don't want to overstretch. Quite happy to do Nordinia, quite happy to do a few other small things around that, but we've got to keep it tight, keep it sensible and get the debt down in the fullness of time. Coming back to issues of costs and prices and so on, margins, your margins were down, but you seem to say that this is in line with your through the cycle target. Well, our return on capital was 13.3%. Now, we have a target through the cycle of 13%. Our cost of capital, we think, is 10%. Pre-tax, put a 30% premium on that. So we expect to earn 13%. We've exceeded that in what is a difficult market, which I think illustrates the strength of our business. We've had great cash flows throughout that period as well, hence the dividend increase we've got. So, yeah, it's been a tough period, but I think we're coming out of it very well. The trend is in the right direction. Um, and we're pretty, you know, pretty confident about where the business goes from here. There must have been some surprise at your dividend increasing by 8% despite the decline in headline earnings per share. Uh, is, is this to keep investors intrigued in the stock or, as you say, reflecting confidence in the state of your balance sheet? I think it reflects confidence in the state of the trading position, it reflects confidence in the state of the balance sheet and it reflects uh, an understandable desire from shareholders to see an, an ongoing increase in the yield that they get. What, what are the conversations that you're having with shareholders? Presumably shareholders understand that this is a highly cyclical stock, but we always know compared with SAPI, SAPI perhaps a greater exposure to the luxury market, glossy paper, etc. For you it's more of a packaging story, isn't it? Yeah. And more emerging market exposure. Uh, we're very much packaging in emerging markets. So it's very different dynamics to SAPI, entirely different dynamics to SAPI. Mm -hmm. So the discussion with our shareholders really has been around, you know, the recently around the Nordinia acquisition. Mm -hmm. Many of them really like what we've done. A number of them are disappointed that we didn't give more money back to them rather than spending it on growing the business. So I think that's the type of dialogue we've been having. 
you know, my view is we have, we've got to keep on growing the asset base and expanding the business if we can generate the right returns. And we've got enough cash flow generation to pay bigger dividends, which is what our intention is. Is there any pressure on you or is it a thought that you're having to sell off some of your Western assets? You said you're not interested in buying any, but are you considering selling some? Not necessarily. No. I mean, I think, you know, West, the Western European markets are important. They're not going to go away. They're pretty torrid right now, but they're not going to go away. So it's important to retain a presence there. Southern, Southern Europe is the big problem. That's 7% of our revenue, so it's really mm -hmm. not a big issue for us. Central Europe, Germany is pretty good. Um, so no, there's no desire necessarily to exit Western Europe. There is a desire to see more and more growth into the emerging markets yes. over time. And I think diversification is your watchword in terms of the number of markets and the kinds of markets and the types of products in which you have a presence. Absolutely. Well, I mean, it had one all been done in Italy, it would have been pretty awful. The fact is that Italy and Spain and Portugal less than 7% of revenue. Germany doing well, so geographically that's great for us. Eastern Europe still doing very nicely, slowed down a bit, of course, mm. given the macro scene. And you know, product-wise, we've got a good array from industrial packaging through now in Nordinia particularly into the very high-value-added consumer packaging space. I think that's the right type of mix one should be looking at. David, outlook for the second half. You said the trend's in the right direction. What can we expect from you? Well, I think clearly um, third quarter in Europe is always a summer quarter, so that's always a softer cyclical, uh, st structural quarter, as it were. But you know, volumes are up and prices are improving, so clearly I think things look good from here. David, thank you. That's David Hawthorne, CEO of the Mondi Group.